Hello, welcome to the Thor Labs Mobile Photonics Lab Experience. We've been driving across the country, stopping at high schools, colleges, community events, trying to create awareness about the field of photonics, provide access to the equipment and the people working in the field, and also spark advancement opportunities for people to join and excel within the photonics community. Now you may be wondering, well, what is photonics? Well, the word photon means a little particle of light. So photonics is the creation of light, it's the use of light, it's the science of light that powers many of the technologies that impact our world. So we've created this intro to photonics experience for visitors to interact, touch, and feel many of the photonics technologies. So come on, take a look inside. We begin with biomedical optics and imaging. The idea is we want to look into a sample without cutting or damaging it. So here I have a card. It's black and shiny on one side. It's pink and rough on the other. I have a normal camera looking down. It's black and pink. And our imaging technique is going to send light down into the card. It's going to come straight back up. And the image will be processed this way. So this is along the top of the card. This is looking into the card. So it's as if you're looking from the side. All right. So this is the pink and rough side. This is the black and shiny side. The black side has a sticker on top of the card that's underneath. Now, if I take this away and I put my finger underneath, the very bright white line on top is the very top layer of skin that you see when you look at your finger. So the peaks and the valleys are the grooves in the fingerprint. The very top layer of skin is called the epidermis. The bottom is called the dermis. And then those little squiggly lines that we see in there are sweat ducts. If we flip this over and I look at my fingernail, this is the very tip of my nail, the nail going back. And if I slide my finger forward, you can actually see where the nail comes into my finger, the skin coming down, and the cuticle. And so this technique is called optical coherence tomography, or OCT. And where you see it in the day-to-day -day life is in ophthalmology. So when you go for your eye exam, it's very likely that they will take an OCT image of the retina at the back of your eye. So this is the layers of the retina, this is the fovea, and this is the back of the eye. You're looking for growths, anywhere the retina might be detaching from the back of the eye. So on this table, we introduce spectroscopy. So we talk about how colors have wavelengths and how we can use those wavelengths to identify different materials. So in this setup, we have a white light LED that's sending light to a grating. So the initial reflection off that grating, we see the white light on the screen. But if we rotate it, we can see that the white light is actually made up of a whole lot of different colors and we figure out which wavelength corresponds to each of those different colors using a spectrometer. And the spectrometer works very much the same way. It has an optic, like a grating, that breaks up all the light that goes into it, and there's a line of detectors that measures how much power is in each of the colors. And so if we rotate this grating, and we align the color up with the slit, it's sending light into our fiber to our spectrometer, and we can see what's being measured on the screen. So here this blue color is around you know, 465 nanometers. If I rotate to the green, we can see we're about 520 nanometers, to the yellow and the orange and red. And we can continue rotating and we can actually see that we're not really seeing any colors on the disks, but we're actually still measuring power. And so now we're in, moving into the infrared wavelengths. And what's interesting here with the white light LED is that if we line this up so that we look at all the colors that make it up, move this out of the way. And so looking at this spectrum, we can actually see that there's a blue LED with a phosphor that's attached to it. So the blue LED is pumping that phosphor and the phosphor is emitting the colors from the greens into the reds. And the combination of that light from the phosphor plus the blue LED light that leaks through gives us what appears to be white light. So now that we have all of our wavelengths, 
all together looks like a spectrum. And we can use that spectrum to identify different materials. So on this system, we have essentially a fancier spectrometer. And we have a light source that's giving infrared wavelengths. So those wavelengths that we no longer see with our eyes. And so the wavelengths are actually 2,000 to 5,000 nanometers. And so in this spectrum, we can see dips here from water absorption and dips here from carbon dioxide absorption within the room air. So if I blow into the path, we can see more absorption from the carbon dioxide in the path. And so here I have a canned air. Now if I spray this canned air into the path, now you can see how many different wavelengths interact with that chemical that's in the canned air. And so if you know which wavelengths interact with your material, you can then use the spectrum of light to identify that material. And that's exactly what they're doing on the James Webb Telescope. They have the spectrometer that's looking at this same wavelength range, and they're looking at the spectrum of light that's coming back from distant planets. And so using that spectrum, they can identify the gases that are on those planets without us ever traveling there. So on this table, we're introducing optical communications, or how do we send information with light? So on the laptop, we're playing music. And normally you would have that electrical signal going right to your speaker and you'd be listening to that music. But instead, we're taking that signal and we're sending them to two separate lasers. And we're changing the amount of power of those lasers based off of that musical signal. So the lasers travel through free space to a detector that detector converts that optical signal into an electrical signal, which is then being played on our speaker. So when we let all the light through, now we can hear the music being played. If we block that signal, no longer hearing the music. If we change how much light is passing through, we can change the volume. Now with the two lasers, we're actually sending different pieces of information. If we only let the red channel through, now we can only hear the vocals of the music. And if we only let the green channel through, we're only hearing the background music. And so when we think about our high-speed internet, we have our phones, our tablets, our computers, all of them need a direct line of communication. And so you can separate those lines of information by using different colors in the light that's been traveling to your home. Now we don't want to shoot lasers all over the place in order to get high-speed internet. So we send light to our homes using optical fiber. So here we see a blown up view of what fiber looks like. You have a glass in the center called the core and a glass surrounding it called the cladding. And so if we send light into the fiber, we can see that the light stays confined to the core. And to give a sense of scale, the core is about 100 microns in diameter, so about the width of a human hair. Now when we talk about high-speed internet coming into our homes, we're using single-mode fiber. And the primary difference is that the size of that core is much smaller. So now the core is approximately 10 microns or one-tenth the size of human hair. And to give an idea of how fiber works, we have the fish tank demo over here. So we have water inside of the tank, and the laser is passing straight through that water to the card. But there's a hole in the side of the tank. And if I line that laser beam with the hole, the light is now being guided down into the bucket. So the light's actually bouncing back and forth inside of that stream of water, much like the light stays confined within the core of the fiber. So the water acts as the core, the air around it acts as the cladding, and the light is confined down into the bucket, much like the core of the fiber guides the light into our homes. And that concludes our intro to photonics experience, where we've introduced three technologies all based on the use of light. We hope to see you on the road sometime so that you too can experience the Thor Labs Mobile Photonics Lab.